Okay, common saxophone problem with the low notes. I'm, I am going to start on low D and go chromatically down to low B flat, lowest note on the instrument, and take note of which notes work and which notes don't work. Okay, so we only had two working notes there. D worked and C worked. That's kind of curious, right? Because if you have a leak in the instrument, it would make sense that every note below the leak would also not work, right? Because the air still got to get past that leak. So D worked, C sharp didn't work, but low C did work, low B didn't work, and low B flat didn't work. So this is one simple screw that's actually affecting all of that. So what do those three notes that didn't work have in common that's not applicable for the two notes that did work? Remember back to sax tech, they all involve these keys here, right? Left hand spatula, left hand pinky keys. I've even heard it called left hand plateau keys. That's a bit of a misnomer. I wouldn't call it that. But these keys right here, this general cluster. That's right. We need that one for C sharp. We don't need any of them for C. Need that one for B and that one for B flat. So, okay, we're, we're getting somewhere. We know that has something to do with it. And if you'll notice, keep an eye on our old friend G sharp here. Whenever I press any of these keys, they also press down the G sharp key. Curious. You may have covered this in sax tech, you may not have, but you can actually play G sharp by pressing any of these, which is handy if you had to go from low C sharp to G sharp really fast. You don't have to hip hop back and forth here. All you have to do is tremolo your right hand. You can keep this down and you're going back and forth between low C sharp and G sharp. Saxophonists will use that once in a while. And it's very good to know as a technician too. So we know pressing any of these opens the G sharp key. Well, if we press any of these and the G sharp key opens, I mean, the G sharp key is way up here. How come we're not encountering, there we go, right there. Um, how come we're not encountering a leak with um, anything where we use these keys? Let's investigate a little bit closer. Right above your G sharp key, we have this adjustment screw right here. It's actually attached to our F sharp key. So, and our F sharp key is down anytime we press anything on the right hand. So with that screw in proper adjustment, that will hold down the G sharp key when we press any of the spatula keys and have our right hand down, which is why that G sharp key shouldn't be popping open when we play low C sharp, low B, and low B flat. But that screw backs out sometimes, like it has right now. Like even I'm gonna press low B flat and watch the G sharp key. See it moving? Should not be moving there. All right, if I didn't have the right hand down, yes, it should move, it should move a lot. With the right hand down, that should keep it from moving, but that screw is backed out, it's under-regulated. So we need to tighten that screw. You know, I'm going to purposely leave it a little underregulated. How can you tell if it's gone far enough? Because we don't want to go too far, right? That's overregulated. There will be a leak with every single note that requires your right hand. So we don't want to go too far. And, you know, a leak light would be a great way to do it. You might not have that in the band room. So you're going to have to play it yourself. Even if you're not such a good saxophone player, I'll give you some tips on this. Very first thing is going to be play your low D. Get that going nice and strong, and when you've got a comfortable low D going, add your G sharp key, right? Because right hand down, if this is fully in adjustment, G sharp shouldn't move. I can see it moving. This is probably gonna squeak, but we'll, we'll give it a shot just so you can hear what it sounds like. All right, so I got my low D going. Now I'm gonna start adding the G sharp key. So we know we gotta go a bit farther, right? When it's that far out, it's obvious. But what about dialing it into place? And we want this adjusted pretty well too. Those low notes are hard, especially for young kids.
So you want this adjusted as well as possible. Same exercise. <laughs> change. We know we're close because D doesn't cut out on me. Um, you can also do this with low C too. It's a little harder to get the low C out, but sometimes you can tell a little bit better whether the G sharp's moving or not. I think that is making a slightly bigger difference, but we're not there yet. So I want to keep going until that little warble just, just goes away. Sure if that's going to come through on the camera i can just barely feel that just barely so i need to go just a hair tighter on the screw and at this point i'm thinking of turning the screw in like um like uh quarter turns to kind of keep track of how far i've gone <laughs> Let's make sure everything else uh works that um those low notes that i played um to start out the video are functioning <laughs> So again, if you're not sure which uh, adjustment screw that is, move your G-sharp with the touch piece. See what key that's moving right there, and then look for the screw that's right above it. There's another very similar looking screw right here. All that guy does is adjust your one in one B-flat. And that's, a, that's the B-flat that doesn't get used very often on saxophone. It's the worst one. We're kind of opposite of the flute in the saxophone world, where flutes use one and one as their main B-flat. This is pretty much your last choice for B-flat, but you can see when I press right hand, first finger, the F key, my B-flat key way up here is going up and down. And honestly, one and one B-flat will still come out, even if this is a little bit under-adjusted. Never going to be exactly in tune, but pretty close, right? I'll back that screw out just a little bit so you can hear the difference. A little more than that. There we go. So I'll go B to B flat, B to one and one B flat. Not so good, right? So. Again, we're going to tighten this one. It doesn't need to be as a um, um, as like perfect of an adjustment as the adjustment screw that's over the G sharp key. And then to check that, press your one and one, and then use your middle finger to just tap on the bis B flat key. Um, that's that little pearl that you don't press when you're in the home position for your saxophone keys. So we have one and one going, and then. I'm just going to fiddle with that with my middle finger. A little wobbly. The B flat would pass. We would only ever use that for a real quick passage or a trill or something like that. So it can be a little bit out. And I would say for a trill fingering, close enough right there. That's adjusted well enough for one and one B flat. <laughs> 